All right, welcome back everyone. So we've made it to that time. Time for the mods, accessories, and hacks video for my new Trail 125. Now I've had this bike for about three weeks now, and what I've done is I've gone out and I picked up a few small things and made a few small modifications to the bike to get it right where I want it. What I haven't done is gone out and spent thousands of dollars on crazy accessories from overseas. If you spend any time online uh, looking at these bikes, you'll see quickly that people go absolutely bonkers and accessorize these things to the gills. That was never my intention. If you watch my introduction video, uh, I basically came right out and said, I have no real plans to add a whole lot to this bike other than a few small minor adjustments. All right, so the first thing you may notice on the front of the bike are the hand guards. Now these are the Zeta X3s. They're very simple hand guards and they weren't the initial hand guards that I was going to install. I actually ordered these much more robust Zeta hand guards from Japan that have two points of contact and are more similar to say like a traditional Bark Buster hand guard. And I wanted these because I wanted to have full protection in case I dropped the bike as well. But what I realized when I went to install them was the Trail 125 has these really weird sort of rotating bar ends. And in order to get these on, I would essentially have to do surgery on my handlebars and pull these bar end weights out. And I was watching YouTube videos on how to do it. And I got to a point where I was just like, you know what? I don't want to do this with my brand new bike. So instead, I just picked up these $40 um, Zeta X3s. And yes, they don't have full protection for falls but they offer some minimal protection from the front. And that's really all I wanted. I just wanted a simple handguard solution. All right, so the next thing you may notice is that I did install a simple two port USB power adapter. Now, when you get the bike brand new, this hole is here. It's simply plugged with a rubber insert. And all I did was I went online and I bought a $20 USB uh, power unit and I ran it directly to the battery, just like on the Himalayan. What's cool about this one is uh, it's got an on off switch on it as well, so I won't drain my battery. Uh, let me get in here so you can see it. Um, and it works perfectly fine. And it fits in the factory hole for the most part. I did have to get in there with a Dremel and kind of sand it out just a little bit because this particular unit was just like a half millimeter too big around. And so I did have to sort of clean out that opening a little bit and it popped right in, tightened it up and simply ran the power down to the battery and plugged it in. All right, so this next note here on the gear shifter assembly is just meant to denote that I did adjust the position of the gear shifter, but ultimately I ended up adjusting it back. So this bike does come with both a, a standard toe shifter and a heel shifter. And I suspect part of the reason it comes with a heel shifter is because in Southeast Asia where these bikes are sold by the millions, a lot of people ride around in sandals and you can't really shift with your toe uh, with sandals. And so a lot of people use the heel shifter to shift. Personally, I don't really like it. Um, I tried playing around with it for a couple weeks and honestly, I'm just a tried and true toe shifter through and through. So um, initially what I had done was I had moved the gear shifter uh, down one spline and it definitely made the heel shifting easier, but it made the toe shifting really difficult because you really had to kind of point your foot very, very far down to get up under it. So ultimately I moved it back into this position and this works really good. This is the factory position. It works really good for toe shifting, but it's essentially impossible now to heel shift just because it's impossible to get your heel back that far while you're riding the bike. So I put it back to the standard position. It was a simple matter of uh, removing this screw back here and then just sliding the gear shifter off, tilting it and sliding it back on. So a very simple adjustment and I know a lot of folks do shift it so that they can work on the, with the heel shifter, but it's just not my jam. I prefer to toe shift, so I'm kind of just ignoring the heel shifter. All right, moving back. We got another sticky note here and this is just simply to note that I did install a uh, battery tender plug and all I did was I took off the main compartment here and wired it into the battery and then simply fished it behind this plastic panel right here and it sticks out right here and it's a really really nice spot for it because it kind of just tucks in right there it doesn't move and then it's very accessible for when I want to plug it in to my tender on the wall. 
So the, the dealership actually did install a, a, a tender plug, but it kind of came out the front by the engine and I just didn't like the placement of it. So I yanked that one and put in my own. And I find that this is a really nice place to actually have it because also if I'm carrying something on the back that I want to charge, I've got very easy access to it as well. So I think that's a really good solution right there. All right, so moving on, we've got a sticky note on the seat. Why is there a sticky note on the seat? Well, because I wanna show you what I did under the seat. So let me go ahead and pop the seat and show you what's going on underneath. Now, unlike my scooter or other motorcycles, there's no storage compartment under the seat for documents or for anything for that matter. If you come around here, you can see I Velcroed this baggie to the inside of the seat. And what it has in it is has the owner's manual and it has my registration information. And then I can just put it back in here and it, it's just the right fit so that the seat still closes. And it's perfect because I just wanted a little place to, to hide my documents and it's under the seat. It's exactly where you'd expect to go if you need to get, if you get pulled over and you need to get to your documents. And you know, the owner's manual talks about some sort of document compartments behind the side panel, but it doesn't exist. I don't know what they're talking about. I looked over there, there is no document compartment. So I'm not quite sure what that's all about, but this solution works perfect. It's just a little waterproof baggie under the seat. So. That's what I do for my documents. Moving on. All right, so we're back here at the toolbox. And the reason why I got a sticky note here is because I made some changes that I think are really important to the toolbox. One is kind of a substantial change and one is just kind of a little hack. Now the tools you get with this bike are not really tools. You get a fuse puller and you get a single screwdriver, which I guess is better than nothing, but I prefer to have at least a small amount of actual usable tools. The second thing is that the door of the toolbox likes to pop itself open. Uh, at least that's what I've read online. And so even when you close it correctly, I've heard stories about people's tools falling out. So the first thing I'll show you is the hack. The hack is simply that I have a um, reusable zip tie on here. I just zip around the little door so that if it were to pop open, uh, I know that my tools won't be going anywhere. Now, the second thing is, is I wanna show you what I actually did with regards to my tools. All right, so we've got the zip tie off. I'm gonna open up the toolbox and show you what I did as my tool solution. If you look, there's a small bag in here. And what this is, is this is a small travel toolkit from Cruise Tools. However, it's also been customized. So let me show you exactly what it is that I've got in this toolkit so that you can kind of see what it is that I decided to carry. All right, so I've got the toolkit here on the table. I'm just gonna open it up and show you what it is that I'm carrying on this bike. So I've got a small little pocket Leatherman, small little crescent wrench, little tube of Loctite, the actual screwdriver. Actually, this is the cruise screwdriver. That's not the factory screwdriver. I've got a uh, 10 and 12 millimeter uh, wrench or spanner if you choose. I've also got a larger crescent wrench. I've got all the Allen keys as well as that fuse puller that came with the kit. I've got a tire pressure gauge. I've got one other wrench that's a 14. And then I've got a couple of zip ties. Right, so why am I carrying all this? Well, the simple answer is one, because it fits and I might as well carry all the tools that I can, that I can use to work on the bike if they fit. Uh, but secondly, just with the combination of the simple things you see here, I can work on just about everything on the bike. I could even take tires off with this combination of crescent and standard wrenches. So, you know, yes, it's not everything. I don't have a spark plug socket. I don't have my tire spoons in this particular bag, but I have enough to be able to tinker with most things when I'm getting around town. All right, so why is there a sticky note on the tail light? I'll tell you why. One of the things that I always like to carry on a motorcycle is a minimal first aid kit. I'm talking like band-aids and a few small antiseptic wipes. Well, there's no real good small place, small compartment on this bike to carry first aid kit. So I improvise. If you look tucked up underneath here, 
is a small box with two magnets on the back. This is designed to carry like GPS trackers for your car, but I've got small first aid kit supplies in here and I've just got it tucked up underneath and it ain't going anywhere. So now I know no matter where I go, I've at least got a minimal first aid kit. Plus there's enough leftover space in the little first aid kit box where I could hide something else small if I wanted to. Plus it's so inconspicuous that you'd never notice it unless I pointed it out to you. All right, so what's the deal with this one here? Well, let me show you. So what I did when I first got this bike, very soon after getting it, is I actually drained all the oil out of it within the first week. And you might be thinking, why the hell would you do that? You don't have to do the first oil change for 600 miles. Well, it's because I wanted to install a magnetic drain plug. So if you look under here, you probably can't see it, um, but I did install a gold plug right here. And the whole idea is that, you know, this bike does not have a standard oil filter. It has a centrifugal oil spinner, which is kind of an old school technology. I wish it had a tra traditional oil filter, but it doesn't. And so one of the things that you can do right off the bat to help uh, clear out some of the gunk that comes out of the engine when it's still breaking in is by putting one of those gold plugs in. So I put that gold plug in after about 50 miles. Uh, and when I go to do the oil change at 600, it'll be really interesting to see how much stuff it picked up. All right, so now I'm sitting on the bike and I've got a couple of sticky notes up front that I just wanna point out. Uh, the first is obviously right here. I've got a sticky note because I did install a quad lock up here on the handlebar and I find that that's a really good position for when I'm riding. Uh, I can actually read it. It's actually pretty nice right there and it's not too far down from my site. Uh, so I actually really like that placement. I know a lot of people install a horizontal brace bar uh, and they put their electronics on that. Um, but I think where I have it right now is actually an ideal spot. But that does lead me into the last sticky note. So I've got a sticky note here on the handlebars for two reasons. One is because a lot of people will flip the handlebar um, bracket around in order to move the handlebars a little further away. And honestly, I'm not gonna do that because I like where the handlebars are. They fit me fine, they suit me fine. I don't really wanna get in there and mess around with it. But the other thing is, is I did actually order one of those brace bars. Uh, I didn't get the really expensive one from Japan. I just got like a much cheaper one. Um, and that should be coming in, in the next few days. So I will put that across here and see how I like it. But if I don't like it, I might just take it back off. It was really cheap. I just kind of wanted to see if it helps with some of the vibration and allows me also a place to possibly clamp a few extra things on. So that's the only other accessory that I have on order right now. So very last, but definitely not least, I want to talk about the rear rack. All right. So hands down, the most important feature probably of this bike is this ridiculous rear rack. And there's a lot of things that you can do with this rack. And there's a lot of solutions I've seen people come up with, some very clever, some very standard. I've seen people put essentially like a Pelican case on here because then it allows you to have closed secured storage. I've seen people with soft tail bags. I've seen people with milk crates. Uh, and all sorts of other various concoctions and clever, ridiculous solutions. So if you watch the video where I introduced this bike, you'll remember that I had a milk crate on the back, and that is typically what I ride around with. And I wanted to show you first how I installed the milk crate, but also some of the other solutions that I could possibly implement with regards to storage. All right, so your first option when it comes to storage is a soft tail bag. Now I've had this old Kemimoto bag laying around for who knows how long, and it works really well. Uh, it gives you a closable storage space where I can put say my cover or my lock and, or groceries or whatever, and it's got very simple uh, side clips that you can strap down to the rack. Now I was using this for the first week or so, and it works really well, it's fine, but ultimately I decided to go to the milk crate. So, milk crates. This is the milk crate I use. It's a medium sized big ant milk crate. It fits really nicely on the back. Still leaves me a little bit of room on the front and back to add something like, say, a fuel canister or some sort of other storage. 
And what's really nice about this particular brand is it folds down, which I showed in that intro video as well. So it can tuck away to a really small profile. Now, 99% of the riding that I do on this bike is probably going to be either commuting into work, running errands around town, or goofing off on the trails behind the house. So I don't really have an immediate need for any sort of obvious, secure storage. And so that's why for me, the mill crate makes the most sense. Now, if I actually was going to do some sort of long adventure trip on the 125, I probably would put one of those hard Pelican case style cases on the back that I can close shut and lock and put all my tire tubes and repair equipment in there as well. But again, for the purpose of why I bought this particular machine, the mill crate is quite honestly the most practical solution. Now, one obvious downside to having a mill crate on the back of the 125 is that it's very conspicuous. Anything you've got in that crate is kind of fair game. It's open to the public. So a solution I've come up with to have slightly more discreet storage is I found this old canvas satchel bag up in my closet, which you can see here, and I've just looped it around the bar on the back rack, and I can store things in here and ride around with this bag, and it works perfectly fine. Now, you can store fuel canisters in there, you can store your lock in there, you can store whatever you want in there, and it works really well, and it again, it just kind of locks itself down by wrapping around uh, the rear bar on the rack here. Now, another question that a lot of people obsess over when it comes to the 125 is how to carry spare fuel. The new 125 does not come with that very convenient little two liter canteen that the old Trail 90s came with, so people get very creative with how to carry spare fuel. Now again, for me, I don't really plan on taking any long trips on this bike, and I've already calculated the uh, gas mileage on this thing, and it gets over 150 miles on a tank. So I'm really not too concerned about it. However, with that said, I have some very simple solutions so that you don't have to go out and spend $400 on some crazy contraption to carry your fuel. I've got a milk crate on the back. I've got this little Nelson rig fuel bottle carrier. It carries a standard one liter bottle, right? Super easy to get, super cheap, 20 bucks on Amazon, and it has all sorts of connection points on it. So what I was doing for most of last week is I simply had this bottle strapped to the inside of the crate up against and around the wall of the crate, and that works perfectly fine. Of course, the downside to that is it reduces the amount of space you've got in the crate, and it also makes it so that you can't collapse the crate. So another solution is you can basically put this anywhere, just like a tool tube. But what I was doing later in the week, I'm gonna bring you around over this way, is I was simply putting the fuel canister right there and mounting it around the rack. And that way I still had room for my rack and I could still carry one liter of fuel. I also have my trusty two liter containers, which I use on the Himalayan. And I've got this little carrying pouch for that. And this can strap here, it can strap on the inside. I could take the fuel canister out and simply just put it in the crate or put it in the bag or whatever I've got on the back. It also mounts right there. So I've got a myriad of solutions for carrying fuel. All right, now let's say I did want to go absolutely bonkers and take the bike all the way up to like Prudhoe Bay or something and needed to carry a ridiculous amount of spare fuel. I do also have this Rotopax container, which incidentally fits perfectly on the bottom of the crate. So there's no need for me to go out and buy one of these crazy contraptions that allows you to sort of strap a spare canister you know, down below somewhere when I can just throw a one liter bottle somewhere on the bike or a two liter bottle or a one gallon roto pack. So if you're curious as to how I actually installed the crate on the back of the trail, let me show you. It's actually really quite simple. All you need are two M6 bolts, a couple of really large washers, an old license plate. This is one I literally found on the ground from Montana. I have no idea who it belongs to, but it was literally sitting on the ground. And then I use a piece of 
tool drawer liner to protect the paint on the back. So all I did was I cut a piece out that fits the liner. I, uh, I cut a couple of holes in the liner where the particular bolt holes are, and then I use the license plate to essentially lock down the crate. So let me walk you through it real quick. So we've got this in place. Everything's lined up. Yep, I can see through the two holes one of our bolts here. We're gonna fish that through. We got it. So if you look inside now, you can see I've basically just got the license and I can still kind of move this around if I want to straighten it up and then I'll just tighten these down and basically that just clamps on to the bottom and holds it in place. All right, I did put a little bit of Loctite on these bolts. That's pretty good. And you can see, I mean, that is, that is totally solid. And then I just put a small piece of cardboard on the top to cover it up and you've got a workable milk crate that can still be collapsed. That's the important part, right? It is super solid, not going anywhere. Um, and it's also protected with the drawer liner. Uh, if you'd like to see again how it collapses, it's a very simple, there's just these two little levers on the side panels and it just connects right up and that's it. All right, so that's basically it. That's the Trail 125 and those are the uh, quick hacks, mods and accessories that I've added to the bike. There are a few other things that I just wanted to show you really quick that I also bought for the bike. I do have some small tire spoons uh, for the bike. These are just the little tiny Motion Pro ones as well as some spare tubes and uh, rim strips um, as well as rim shields. Uh, so the basics to change a tire should I need to. Um, I also did get a new pair of very cheap riding gloves because the gloves I was using were basically just leather carpenter gloves and I got these for like 30 bucks. Rocket brand. Wow. Uh, but hey, they work. Uh, I'm still using the same old helmet I was using before. I didn't go out and buy a new $500 helmet. So I did have one other sort of novelty accessory that I initially had installed, but I've since removed it just because, I don't know, I just decided I didn't want to deal with it. But this is a little license plate storage box. And so what you do is you mount the back of it to your license plate holder, and then you put your license plate on the front. And then what it gives you is basically a lockable small storage compartment uh, where you can put like your documents and such. So initially I had this on the bike and I had like a bunch of documents and some spare tools in there, but um, I didn't like the idea of having to carry another key. So instead I just put the documents under the seat like you saw and I just upgraded the toolkit. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you got something useful out of this. And uh, I think that's pretty much it for the sticky notes. So thanks for watching. Take care, be safe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.